All right, guys, welcome to episode seven, Same Circle Wrestling. Uh, we got a show that's going to kind of be all over the place because we missed the last couple weeks. Um, we're trying to kind of fish for things to talk about. Um, we're going to mostly talk about NXT, I believe. Uh, talk a little about the Brock Lesnar situation because that's pretty much the headline of WWE at this point. Um, I think, honestly, that's probably the most... Um, the most engaging storyline that the WWE has right now, and it's Pretty a real storyline. Yeah. Um, we saw a couple returns. We got people coming back to NXT, uh, using it as kind of a platform to like springboard themselves back up to where they want to be, uh, and then make their way to the main roster eventually, hopefully. A um, couple matches as far as Divas go. Uh, there's been like a movement for... Uh, the social networks that are trying to get the divas to uh, have a little bit more airtime. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, but anyway, welcome to the show. I'm Seth Skinner. Gary Carpentier. I'm Bill Harrison. So, like we said, uh, Brock Lesnar is still pretty much on the fence, I guess. As far as reporting goes, he's on the fence. Uh, whether he wants to stay in WWE or uh, go to UFC. And, uh, I guess last Raw, not this past Raw, but the Raw before, uh, Lesnar was actually scheduled to be on the show, uh, and had contract negotiations with Vince McMahon, uh, a lot of people who were backstage said that it was blown up and they were yelling at each other, Lesnar walked out, uh, never was on the show, so either that's a work or, uh, Lesnar is... Uh, just not happy with what Vince McMahon was offering him, whether it be storyline-wise, contract-wise. Uh, it's yet to be seen. Uh, but I think that, as far as that goes, I think Lesnar's probably ultimately going to stay. Probably. Yeah, word on the street is that the dispute's entirely about money. It was, uh, realistically, Brock has shown mm-hmm. that he'll job to a fucking broomstick if you pay him enough. Pretty much. Yeah. And I think... You know, it's like the the situation that he has right now, it's like you're the top guy. You only got to show up a couple times a year. You know, you're not going to get hurt uh, in the wrestling ring as much as you would in the cage. Uh, and I don't think Brock Lesnar... I mean, Brock Lesnar lost his last two UFC fights, didn't he? I think so. He lost Pretty to... Sure. Um, oh, what was his last fight? Last Overeem, right? right? Overeem, yeah, Overeem, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he lost with a kick there body kick yeah and it was Kane that got him before that wasn't it yeah Kane mm-hmm. Velasquez um so I mean like it's not like he went out on a good note you know like so it's it's questionable whether uh he's gonna be at the top of the UFC if he does go back so it's like be at the top of WWE like guaranteed or start from square one in the UFC, basically. Frank Mir's gone public angling for the rubber match with Lesnar, which could be pretty interesting. It'd be something that might get him back in there. It's like, but it's like, Mir, go, go over there. Sit down. Yeah, it's sit like, down. A, you see what this man did you last time? Go sit down. Sit down. And how old is, is Frank Mir at this point? Third, what, he's late 30s, right? He's gotta be, yeah, at least. And he's been, he's not the most consistent either. And the thing about him is he's a submission fighter, so it's like yeah. that's the, the only reason he beat Brock Lesnar initially was that knee bar, and because he was it, Lesnar was inexperienced at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their their second match was realistically the only time I've ever been afraid that somebody would die in the ring. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, but anyway, this isn't a UFC podcast, so. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, what we're trying to say is that we expect Lesnar to stay, I guess, yeah, I, uh, yeah. overall. Absolutely. Um, we'll see more of that, hopefully, in the coming weeks. It's going to be before WrestleMania that we know, mm-hmm. I assume. Uh, he is under contract through WrestleMania, so... As of now. Yeah. I'm not so sure. I feel like the UFC has been doing better financially so far this year. I do feel like they could offer him more money than WWE. WWE's been struggling to the point where they had to scale back on how much they were booking Brock, so I wouldn't be surprised if they can't pay Brock what he wants. Right. Oh, I think they could. But it's a matter of... I think it's more for him, it's more of a matter of health. And like I said, you if you're in the WWE, he, he knows he's going to be 
the top guy there. With with the UFC, it's he has to. He's the only one that can really control where he's going to go. In the WWE, he's got Vince McMahon that's going to give him that boost. Like mm-hmm. no no matter what, they're going to put him on top. Even if he does drop the belt, he's still going to be you know one of those dominant heels. Yeah. yeah. Um. So on Raw, uh, past couple weeks we saw Randy Orton return. Uh, we also saw uh, the John Stewart Seth Rollins thing kind of culminate uh, in the ring. They had Rollins like set up with a desk and everything, did the Daily Show theme. I thought that was awesome because I like I love the Daily Show and mm-hmm. I like John Stewart a lot. Yeah. So uh, I-, I thought that was really cool. And John Stewart has mentioned wrestling a bunch of times on his show, so you know that he's a relatively avid fan of mm-hmm. the show. Um, so that was interesting. They had Orton come out, uh, kind of distracted Rollins, uh, Stewart throws a, a kick to the groin, uh, gets away, acts like the, the scaredy cat kind of runs away and shit. Um, but it kind of, it kind of ended sort of abruptly. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do a little bit more with Jon Stewart. Mm. Maybe not, but it'd be cool. There's a lot of people on Twitter saying push Jon Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag push too. Uh, so the intercontinental title picture is also what I want to talk about because this is um they're they're, they're trying to elevate this title because they know that right now this uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship is kind of just not in the picture at all because of the fact that Lesnar doesn't show up all the time. Mm-hmm. So they got to have a belt that you know either the U.S. title or the intercontinental title that uh, sort of takes the spot. Uh, like we said before, uh, I think it was last time, we we pretty much just said that there's no, there aren't any title matches on these these shows anymore, like Raw and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, you'd see a main event, you know, every couple of weeks that involves that title, you know, uh, whatever one was assigned to, uh, whatever show. Um, so, what they're doing is they're elevating the Intercontinental title by having it hot potato between guys. Uh, it started with Dean Ambrose taking the title from uh, Wade Barrett. Bad News Barrett, I should say. I don't know if he's rebranded or what, if they want to call him Wade, uh, Bad News Barrett. I think they, they don't want to call him Wade Barrett, but they do. Oh, they like do. I've, I've heard him say it, but he'll be like, oh, <coughs> Bad News Barrett, rather, or be right. something yeah. stupid, try and correct themselves. All right. I think he's trying to rebrand as Bad News Barrett, but... I, I'm still gonna call him Wade Barrett. Uh, yeah. When in doubt, you always assume a commentary botch realistically. Yeah. Uh, oh, and speaking of commentary, they had Booker T in that spot this week with uh, Triple H, kind of making an example of his his uh, authority, I guess. Um, but the Intercontinental Championship is uh, up in the air right now, uh, l- almost literally, because it's gonna be in a, a ladder match. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, and, uh, at WrestleMania, it's going to be, I forgot who's confirmed. It's Dean Ambrose. Is Daniel Bryan confirmed for that? Uh, no, I think but so. oh. I, I don't think he is, but it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much confirmed all but officially. Right. So it's, uh, Dean Ambrose. Our truth Bad News Barrett. Our truth yeah. Uh, is it Harper? Yeah. Yep. Luke Harper. Is Ziggler in it? Yeah, yeah Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler. And at the end of SmackDown, as Daniel Bryan was celebrating with the title, out of nowhere, they had Stardust come out and attack him yeah. and establish oh, yeah, him in the match. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of up in the air for that uh, that last spot. But I think it's a six-man ladder match for the Intercontinental title. Uh, and I uh, wouldn't be surprised if Dean Ambrose comes out with it. Yeah, neither would I. Belt of SmackDown. And having Daniel Bryan as the man to elevate both of them would be a really good idea. Right. And I think not only the Intercontinental title, but they're trying to elevate the U.S. title with the uh, Cena-Rusev thing that yeah. they're doing. So that could be a very interesting situation. You could have the two top faces in the company outside of Roman Reigns walking out of WrestleMania with the two mid-card belts. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really the only way you can elevate those titles is put those guys in that picture. And those are the guys that belong in the title picture anyway. Right, exactly. Um, so there's also been, 
I guess Bill, ne- Bill DeMott has stepped down from his NXT position. He's not going to be training guys anymore because of a bunch of accusations uh, as far as verbal, physical abuse. Um, not sure about the credibility of these. Uh, I personally was thinking that it's probably just um, a, a matter of guys not he he goes hard on people i assume and and you have to yeah because that's if you've ever watched tough enough that's kind of how that show is and that's how the business is you got to learn to uh take take bumps in the ring and outside the ring yeah <laughs> it's not it's not a it's not a cakewalk it's just you know it's it's what you sign up for like your body's going to go through excruciating stuff and it's about how hard you want it it's if you if you I mean if you can't even take training from a guy who's been through it and stuff, then what the hell are you even doing there? Right, and, and you're going to get hurt in the ring. You're going to get hurt regardless. And you also have to be able to deal with uh, the the whole um, just everything that has to do with the business because you have to deal with the booking. Uh, as a character, you don't have full creative control over who you are uh, a lot of the time. Once you prove yourself, you you do start to get that creative control, mm-hmm. but initially you're gonna get pushed around as far as you know what you have to do. So I think that's his disciplinary uh, style. Yeah. But uh, you know, again, we don't have a hundred percent of you know we don't know the ins and outs of what he's done. Uh, most of it's just accusations now. Uh, I'm assuming they're just going to investigate it and see what was good, but the problem was he, uh, you know, he's been called out by multiple people, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do agree that you need a drill instructor type yeah. leader down there, but if you believe uh, the accusations that have been thrown around, it goes well beyond that, well beyond the realm of reason. Yeah. I've heard, like, like striking concussed wrestlers in the head. Mm-hmm. Like, I've heard... Making them do drills butt naked, just outside of the realm of reasonability, really. Right. That sounds a little out there. So, uh, I guess when that is, when that comes to light, it'll probably be posted on our page. We're doing a lot more of that article posting. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, just keep up to date with that. As long as you can, if you like us on Facebook, like, you're gonna get pretty much all the, the important updates, you know, that we find. Uh, and also, we're on Twitter now. That's my phone. Uh, <laughs> we're also on Twitter now. Um, I think it's at S Circle Wrestling or mm-hmm. S Circle Podcast is what it is. Um, so we're on Twitter. Um, anytime I'm watching the show or Tim is watching the shows, another uh, shout out to Tim. Uh, we are going to be posting results of the matches live as they happen on TV, obviously. Not like during a taping of SmackDown or something. But, right. <clears throat> um, but yeah, we'll be posting results. So if you do uh, want to follow us on Twitter and you're not able to watch a show or something, you're going to be able to get those results. Um, so we also saw AJ return uh, on Raw. Um, and this is this goes along with the whole uh, Give Divas a Chance uh, hashtag that's been kind of blowing up on, on Twitter and social media in general. Uh, they're thinking about, um, just giving them more airtime, giving them longer matches, uh, giving them a chance. (laughs) Um, and I think it's a good thing because number one, you gotta, you gotta drag out a three hour show. Um, and you have talent in the Divas division, especially with AJ Lee coming back. And, and I think Paige... Uh, is at the point where she can feud with anybody and make it a decent feud as far as, like, her character. And, and with AJ coming back, the two are, like, friends, but they kind of, like, have that, like, the they, they clash. The yeah. 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 So I think that's going to be a feud that comes up soon once uh, Nikki Bella possibly drops the belt. I think, in my mind, they're both uh, baby faces, AJ and Paige. Yeah. But at some point, one of them's going to turn. And... That's going to be, have to, yeah. right. That's going to yeah. be, I think, probably the main feud there with Nikki Bella probably still in the, the picture. Yeah. Uh, as much as Nikki Bella gets a lot of shit, uh, I think she's been improving in the ring. Oh, as, yeah. From what I've seen, at least. Yeah, I think she's pretty good. 
I don't know, pre- she, realistically, she, for a while, she's had a, almost a better power move set than Roman Reigns has. <laughs> well, that's she's really the only person in that division that can uh, pull off a power move set, appearance-wise, you know, yeah. like, she just looks like the powerhouse as far as, I mean, because they don't have guys like Tamina Snuka or, you know, somebody in there that's that big, like, China figure. <laughs> Guys. Like they didn't have like yeah yeah <laughs> didn't have like they don't have like a uh, like um what am I trying to say uh Victoria was like the last oh, like yeah. diva that was right. like you know like that average size that but still could pull off like the power moves and stuff. Yeah, it was Beth Phoenix. <coughs> Beth, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I think Natalia could be that kind of style too. Mm-hmm. But she could. They, they've misused her completely. Yeah, yeah. she's kind of the the um. She, it's it's a, it's kind of a shame that she's in that whole uh, feud with the Usos because uh, mm-hmm. I think she could be utilized a lot better in that division. I think what's going to happen is they're going to have her uh, and Naomi feud in the Divas division. Yeah. Um, so as far as that goes, I mean, I, keep an eye on the length of the Divas matches because it's definitely going to go up because Raw's match was obviously longer than what they've had mm-hmm. uh, in the past, the page match. Um, let's see. Kevin Owens uh, has attacked Alex Riley, I think, multiple times mm-hmm. uh, on NXT in the commentator booth. It started with uh, Kevin Owens joining the commentary team for, I believe it was a Finn Balor match. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Alex Riley said something... To, to piss him off or whatever, and Owens comes back out and attacks him. So Alex Riley is on the fence about uh, either staying with the commentary team or uh, becoming an NXT superstar. I guess that's his way of getting back into it. Right. Must be. So uh, I would not be surprised if you see that feud. Probably Alex Riley loses, uh, but it's a good way to put Kevin Owens over a little bit more and to see Alex Riley back mm. in action. I find it funny. Kevin Owens is supposed to be a heel, but he's fighting for his family and all this, and now he's saved us from the commentary of Alex Riley. Yeah. It's like, how am I supposed to hate this guy? He's like good guy heel. Owens. <laughs> um, oh, we're watching Solomon Crow. This is really his first uh, like actual match, I guess mm-hmm. you could say. Mm-hmm. Uh, Solomon Crow came up, I want to say, two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, like made his first appearance. Um, they haven't given him a lot of uh, a lot of time to show what he can do, but I think the indie fans know uh, what he's capable of, uh, and I think his gimmick's gonna be cool too. I think that'll go over pretty well. Mm-hmm. And and like they were saying, uh, uh, I think it was WWE that no, it was Bleacher Report that uh, posted an article saying you know a lot of these NXT gimmicks don't get over with the main event crowd or the main uh, roster crowd. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because, you know, you have a different fan base that's seeing it, you know, and you have a bigger crowd as well. You, you got a bigger uh, age range. And, and at Full Sail University, where they're doing NXT, it's like you have that same crowd almost every every week. Right. Yeah. Um, and going off that, NXT also is trying to move away from Full Sail University. Not uh, permanently, but they're trying to uh, tour a little bit and... Yeah. You know, get their get the brand a little bit more recognized, and I think it's doing a good job because NXT's ratings have gone up. Oh yes, skyrocketing sure. as well. They should, right? And uh, Triple H pretty much uh, takes care of all of it, and I think he he does a really good job of balancing uh, wrestling with promos. He doesn't give a lot of time for promos, but if you have a promo, he lets you do it. Uh, he doesn't like water things down like the the main roster is uh he kind of just lets you go out and do your thing so i think triple h is doing a good job i think eventually when when vince mcmahon steps down it's all triple h's game from there and i think the product itself is gonna go uh is gonna be a lot better interesting no uh, Triple H has the final say on NXT, much like Vince does on the main roster, but apparently the main booker down there is Dusty Rhodes. And I think that really comes through in the way that NXT is almost a modern spin 
on a old school Southern territory style of booking. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like, I just like how fast paced it is. It's only an hour long show, but you get, you know, three or four matches through that and you get, you know, your couple of, uh, your couple of promos to lead into the next week. So it's a good formula that he's, that he's utilizing. Yeah. And like we said, uh, in one of our other episodes that, you know, they're not just training wrestlers, they're training cameramen, they're training the people that are working the lights, and everything they do in Full Sail University is the same stuff that they do on the, on Raw. Yeah. So they can, it's great to have that because when somebody drops out, you got people to step up. Um, and then Sasha Banks and, and Charlotte had a uh, rematch, which actually we're watching right now. Uh, it's not really a rematch because they didn't have a one-on-one, but this is the first one-on-one since that uh, Fatal 4-Way. Um, Sasha Banks wins, uh, and I think it's kind of saying that Charlotte might. Charlotte is probably going to go to the main roster. I wouldn't be surprised if we see her up there relatively soon, mm-hmm. especially with the whole uh, Divas division expanding, trying to get more talent, more time. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see her up there. Sasha Banks is going to be on the top, most likely, for a little while. And then uh, I think they had a match, it was either this week or last week, uh, between Bailey and uh, Becky Lynch, which in my mind is like a number one contendership type thing. Pretty much. To see who's going to feud with Sasha. Uh, we also saw Tyler Breeze. Um, he's developing his character pretty well, I would say. He's gonna most likely is gonna get a push in the near future. And he's he's starting to get it right now, as you, as you can see from the last couple weeks. Uh, he's got that selfie stick thing going on, which I think is cool. You can use it as a weapon. You can use it, you know, just as a gimmick thing. Um, and I think his gimmick is interesting because it's like the eccentric gimmick, but it's not like it's not like way too overinflated, like an Adam Rose or something, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Uh, Adam Rose uh, was his opponent last week uh, on NXT. We saw Brian Kendrick the week before. Uh, we saw Rhino the week before that. Uh, let's see. Emma. Emma's coming back to NXT. Um, so NXT is getting a lot of... Uh, when Rhino. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, so. It was two weeks ago or something like that. Interesting. No, uh, either last night or the night before, Rhino actually worked a show for Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore promotion. So apparently, they're letting wrestlers work NXT and still work indie dates at the same time. Oh. At least for the returning wrestlers. So yeah, that's, that's an cool. interesting wrinkle in WWE policy up to this point, and that opens a lot of possibilities. Yeah, and you see a lot of these guys. Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier. Is a lot of these guys, these veterans, are coming back to NXT to uh, put put a lot of guys over, put young guys over, mm-hmm. and you know I think they want to have the exposure number one, and they also want to help guys. Uh, you know the thing about NXT is that there's not the backstage politics aren't as bad as the main roster. A lot of guys that are there, um, they're all trying to get better, so they're all making each other look good, and they're all. Uh, trying to elevate themselves. So I think that the the chemistry between the performers and NXT is a lot better than what's on the on on Raw and SmackDown. Mm. There's a lot of rumors flying around that many of the main roster wrestlers, especially the divas, are almost jealous of the NXT workers and how they get to take part in all the superior booking and the longer match time and yeah, and I, I believe that there's a lot of main roster uh, superstars that would prefer to be on NXT at this point, right. because you don't get the uh, you don't get the the TV time, but with the number of subscribers that are are with WWE Network at the point at this point in time, it's you're still getting a lot of people are are watching you still. The thing about NXT is that it's geared for the 18 to you know 30 whatever year old male and it's kind of like that's the demographic that they're shooting for mm-hmm. and triple h hits that on the nose oh, yeah. um so 
I guess what we're trying to say is that NXT is still growing and it's getting better and it doesn't really show any signs of stopping. It's like, you know, just a ball rolling down a hill that just keeps growing and growing. Mm -hmm. And there's really, it just keeps gaining momentum. Uh, Eventually, I wouldn't even be surprised if they don't strike a TV deal somewhere. Because I think that... You almost have to eventually. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, 